Welcome everyone to the start of a new gameplay series on Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. What is this fantastic screen you're looking at? Well, this is Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. <laughs> um, it's a text, it's kind of like um, what I would consider part of the free three. The three free that you need. I don't know, some catchy title, insert here. Uh, I, I, I really like playing Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I think it's a great game. Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. And I, I'd also throw in like Dwarf Fortress. It's also Endless Sky, which Oak Tree keeps raving to me about, and uh, probably is worth checking out as well. It's uh, based on Escape Velocity, which was one of my like favorite childhood games. Anyway, uh, this is a very... its There's no installation even needed for Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Same with Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Same with Dwarf Fortress, as far as I know. So they're very portable. You just put them on a thumb drive. You can take them onto anybody's computer, add and remove without anybody knowing. Uh, yeah, you can take them on vacation. I mean, they're very simple. And they're free. And they are, especially this one, Dungeon Crawl itself, is very roguelike. It's true rogue. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't want my name. I, I don't want this as my name. I don't even know what that is. Kind of cool, but we'll go with Tortuga Power. So let's start a new Dungeon Crawl game. <clears throat> Let me see if I can turn down this music just a smidge. Um, this music, by the way, courtesy of Europa Universalis 4, so courtesy of Paradox. Thanks so much to Paradox Interactive for like, making their amazing music available to everyone. Say what you will about their company. Like I know people have lately fallen a little bit away from them, especially the hardcore war gamers. But Paradox still has a wonderful philosophy when it comes to uh, their soundtrack. <clears throat> Now, with um, with any high fantasy type dungeon crawl, as you'd imagine, we're gonna get a lot of different options for our starting species. My favorite is already the one highlighted here. It is the gargoyle. Um, they, they have the simple ones over on the left, the intermediate ones in the middle, advanced the on the right. <clears throat> kind of like the, it's almost like the difficulty. Uh, my favorite is the gargoyle. I'm gonna be playing something very simple today, just a gargoyle fighter. Um, I, Minotaur is also, Minotaur might be, I, I actually think Gargoyle is a fantastic starting one. You just have to be careful about people casting this ex, uh, stone explosion spell on you. Uh, Minotaur is also really good, very, very, very potent as a fighter. Probably a little bit more potent than a Gargoyle, but just the resistances and stuff a Gargoyle has makes it very good as a fighter later in the game when the Minotaur falls off a little bit. So we'll be choosing that, we'll be choosing a fighter. Um, if you choose a Berserker, you're going to start with Trog as your god. So the three things that you choose in this game, like three general things, you're going to be choosing which path to take, you know, what skills to level up, all this stuff. But the three things you mainly choose are your species, which we've done, Gargoyle, then our class. And I would consider class mixed with skills because this, when I hit enter on fighter, it doesn't really mean that much. We can change and easily become a spellcaster. Just, it's just some, some of the starting equipment and the starting, some of the starting stuff. But it doesn't mean that much. Um, what's most important is how your aptitudes, which are all species dependent, and then what you end up doing is based on what you end up choosing to train. And you can only train certain things when you're using them. Like, I'm gonna turn off spell casting. Text-based, just like Dwarf Fortress, just like Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. So I'll be going through a very, very short, small tutorial. I just want to turn off some things right away, like stealth spellcasting, unarmed combat throwing. So the plus is like it trains it reasonably quick, and then I'm gonna further activate fighting and maces. Um, and just I, I don't want to make things too complex, but if I hit equals, I can set a training target. I'm gonna set a training target for my maces and flails of 16, which I already know is going to be what we want for like the morning stars, evening stars, stuff like that. Uh, we have tr we probably have like shields we might want to take up to 25 depends on if we get a large shield or a medium shield I think right now um, if I hit escape and go to my inventory with I I can click on the shield and hit I think it's 15 for this yeah so we can hit s to just set a 15 as a target for shields if I do that hit s now we go to M for skills and if I hit equals it'll show 15 as my target so that's perfect um, don't worry too much about this if you want to just mimic what somebody else does or even you can leave it completely on automatic which is what it was when I first opened the screen 
but I, I, mine is still on like kind of automatic. It, the training percentage itself is determined by an algorithm the computer just does in the back. I don't know exactly what goes into that algorithm, but it kind of weights the things it thinks you need more. Um, you cannot do the exact training percentage if you turn off auto and go to manual. So to me, I just do kind of the semi-automatic. I tell it what things to prioritize with the star. I tell it what things not to do at all with the minus. But, and by the way, you don't actually set minus or star. You just hit A multiple times and it'll cycle through the three. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I just want it to prioritize this and it'll over-prioritize fighting more than maces, even though they're built a star because it thinks I need that more right now. Okay, anyways, enough about that. By the way, okay, not enough about that, going back, if you hit question mark, you can now hit A to bring up what exactly fighting is. Or you can hit B and it'll bring up what maces and flails are, etc. So you can read any of these things yourself if you so choose, but they uh, mostly speak for themselves. Now, um, there is the numpad movement, so 9, 8, 7, 6, or 4, 5 is the way to turn, 6, 3, 2, 1. You can do that general movement, but the two things you're going to be doing the most of in uh, dungeon crawl is press O to auto explore and press tab when an enemy comes in view to just tab over it'll move towards them and then attack them if you see a corpse we can't hit C to butcher that but because I'm not hungry I'm not gonna worry about that get my cursor out of the way and hit O to auto explore some more tab that's all I'm gonna be doing is just O tab O tab especially in the very beginning when it doesn't matter there's points in the game when you don't want to auto explore We'll definitely hit those eventually, but in the very beginning, I'm actually not too worried about dying. I, I don't care. The first thing that's probably going to concern me is a named person. If we encounter a named person, then yeah. Okay, we hit level two. So what is it? Six minutes in and we hit level two. It's pretty good. <laughs> My goal is uh, we'll probably hit level five by the time this video ends. Now, I'm even auto-exploring while I'm injured, which is not necessarily good practice, but I'm pretty confident that nothing in this first level is going to be dangerous for us. I'm like extremely confident in fact that that's the case. <clears throat> that we'll be able to run away if anything happens. Now it's stopping auto explore anytime it finds a staircase or if it finds an item that it thinks we might want to know about. So there's lots of uh, triggers for stopping auto explore. Uh, a little bit dangerous to just sit there and tank all three when I can just back up here and only one can face me. But it just shows you how confident I am. Now, uh, I didn't explain all the little details. If I do shift A, it brings up my abilities. I'm, uh, these are things that are, all of these things are specific to a gargoyle. So you may have none of these. I think you have none of these for most other creatures, but they'll have their own, it'll be replaced by their own little special things. Like uh, trolls, for example, they heal very, very quickly. They have a very high rate of health regeneration. We are resistant to torment. That's a spell which halves your hit points. So it's, it's good. Um, our stone body is resilient, makes sense, we have plus two to our AC, armor class, which is just basically how easy it is for you to block or not take damage from uh, an incoming hit, an incoming, a person who actually land, uh, it's actually whether a person lands a damaging hit against you. They roll a random number generated dice against your armor class. So you can just think of it, if they're rolling a zero to 50, the chance that they are the They'll hit me if they roll something higher than my armor class. Think of it that way. Um, okay, immune to poison. This is so huge for early game. Uh, you're going to run into snakes like that. The, uh, do we already kill one? An adder? If we face adder... Oh, we encountered a ball python, which is not... I don't think those are poisonous. Wait, are they? I don't even know. But uh, poison is just so prevalent in the game, especially the early game. And then there's times late game, too, when it comes around. And we don't have to worry about poison at all. In fact, most of the time when there's a creature that has poison, their power, their strength is mostly based on the fact that they have poison, which means that we don't have to worry about... Those, those creatures are going to be actually very easy for us to fight. Now, when I want to go to the next level, it said done exploring. Auto-explore do doesn't go anywhere else because we're done. Sometimes I like to yell just to make sure, did we already get all the creatures here or not? Like, is there anybody else we missed? Because... While we were going around in the circle, monsters actually are moving. They, they move. They could be, like, not necessarily patrolling, but they, I think they move more or less at random. And they can end up going in a circle while you're making a circle, and you'd never know that they were there. So, you know, you can yell a few times to make sure that anybody left on the floor has already come to you. 
The reason I like to do that is because I min-max everything, so I like to min-max getting all the XP off a floor before dropping down. But what I was doing is, um, X is to look around locally, but if I hit escape and now I hit shift X or capital X, now my cursor moves with me. And in this shift X movement, like uh, mode, you can also hit greater than, so that's shift period, to find downstairs. Now, there's no, it's not finding one because we just got down to a new floor and I haven't found a downstairs in this floor yet. But if I do shift less than, or I mean, so less than sign, so shift comma, it should take me, oh, I'm sitting on top of this, but if I do now shift X and, and uh, shift comma, it'll, it'll move to the nearest upstairs. And if I, hit, if I hit enter now, it will want to move me back, but it won't right now because the goblin's nearby. So we'll just tab kill these guys. Dab, 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 dab. And left a body, and I think we will be hungry soon, so I will cut this one up. Dagger speed, I mean, we're mostly interested in maces, flails. That's what our gargoyle creature likes. So an adder, this is usually an incredibly dangerous foe, just in case you run into one. <laughs> um, if you're not a gargoyle, because they are poisonous. Now for us as a gar gargoyle, we just don't care. I probably shouldn't be so aggressively... Like, I'm, I'm being like very, very reckless. I'm moving around with less hit points. I'm picking up objects on my way to an enemy. <laughs> Like, lots of things. But uh, again, a gargoyle fighter just has very little to fear in the very beginning. We did not kill that bat. <clears throat> there he is. Ah, did we get him? Oh, we did kill him. Okay. Auto explore again. Tab. <clears throat> so this is a little bit reckless. Again, we're up to level four. Just to sit here and tab fight, and you can see it's not going well for us. So we'll go ahead and be a little bit smarter. We'll pull these enemies into a place where they have to fight one at a time, and what do you know, it's going a lot better. Short sword of protections. Well, we're not training swords. I will press five, just the number above T on your keyboard, and that's to wait. It'll wait until something happens. Most often it's wait until, for example, your health is restored or your magic has been regenerated. Or sometimes, if not, if neither of those, it'll just wait um, a specific period of time. Maybe it's like 50 time or something like that. I, I don't even know. So we'll continue to explore. Level Dungeon 2, I also find okay to explore, even a little bit wounded. Um, I wouldn't do this for Dungeon 3. Already Dungeon 3, we have to be a little bit more careful. Or it really depends on how our, I feel our power spike is. But since we haven't already encountered any like really good items or something, I feel like by level 3... We'll need to start worrying about some of the enemies we can find there. And if we ran into a named unit already, so these special named creatures, uh, mostly persons, those are always challenging. Oh, plate armor, so we'll get that, although we won't wear it quite yet. In fact, what I'd like to wear right now is chain mail. We are currently wearing scale mail, which has an armor class of six. So then we get two armor class from our we get two armor class from, what is it called, our Gargoyle-ness, and then we get, this is our shield rating, so our shield rating is a nine. Um, I don't know where, I guess you get two base? I don't know, not exactly sure. So, we also encountered an amulet somewhere, I didn't even, I've just been oh, auto-exploring the whole time, I didn't even notice this one. Now, it's not a good idea to just put on amulets in general you, you can have something which is cursed and bad and then it takes a scroll of remove curse to remove it sometimes even then it comes with like a drain penalty or possibly mag magic residue which are bad things i just want to demonstrate that shift p for put on uh, capital p we can just put this on and it'll automatically be identified so this is Amulet of the Gourmand. This is a very, very typical early game amulet. It's just going to mean that we won't have to worry about food. Food is not usually a concern anyways. I'll just read it. An amulet that allows its wearer to eat fresh raw meat when not hungry. Fresh raw meat when not hungry and drastically increases nutrition gained from them. These effects on the wearer's digestion are cumulative over time and are initially small. Basically, you can't put it on and immediately get this, immediately eat like a thousand pieces of meat and get a huge benefit from it. 
it, ha uh, it improves its effectiveness. Uh, it ramps up pretty quickly. So now we can eat meat whenever we want. And what we'll see is instead of being hungry or very hungry here, have we even got hungry yet? We'll now be able to eat meat all we want. And we'll have full, very full, and ultimately we'll have, uh, what's it called? So whips are potentially good. So if I, when I press O here, it's gonna automatically eat. Well, we can't press O, we have a rat there. So there, we're hungry, perfect. So it's hungry, very hungry, and then near starving. My typical policy on this is don't eat a ration. Don't eat a ration uh, unless you're near starving. But eat, you eat chunks of flesh. There's no penalty to eating chunks of flesh. It's just the fact that they're temporary. They do uh, disintegrate in your inventory. So usually you just survive the whole game. You can go like an entire game without eating a single ration. Um, but as soon as you auto explore, it will eat any of the chunks of flesh in your inventory. It, it will never automatically eat a ration. Uh, so you have to tell it to do that. But as soon as I press O, that's gone because we ate all those chunks of meat. Okay, we have some more people to kill. And more, now we want to slaughter everything we see until our, um, until we see that we're stuffed full. Hey, level five, good. Done exploring, so shift X. We're in this movement zone. Now I'm gonna do shift period, so greater than. It's gonna take me to the closest downstairs. All right, well, let's look here. Diagonals are viable movement paths, so I have to take that, I have to remember that. Now here we wanna be a little bit more careful. We can find some named people already on dungeon three. I don't know if you can find them earlier than that, but I have died on Dungeon 3 many a time. <laughs> and you will die. This is a true roguelike. Oh, this is the crazy guy. Yeah, crazy. Oof. Uh, we won't deal with him quite yet, so let me just put... Um, let me hit E to put an exclusion on that single spot. So if I do E, it limits the entire vision range. It doesn't allow me to go in, in vision range of that. If I hit E on the same spot again, it just boxes off that single place. If I hit E again, it'll remove it entirely. Or you can hit Control E to remove all exclusions. So I'm just going to exclude Auto Explore from going over here so that it doesn't automatically open that and get us into a fight. It doesn't usually auto open those anyways, but I thought I would show that mechanic anyway. <laughs> but again, those adders usually very dangerous, but for us, they're not going to be that bad at all. It's just because gargoyles are immune to poison. It's really, really helpful. And I haven't even shown... Okay, speaking of <laughs> exactly what I wanted to do. Oh boy. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenging situation to get out of without dying. And don't worry, I don't mind if we die. By the way, there we are. We're very full. Engorged is the next step, the final step. Um, so Jessica, let's look at her. We're just going to shift X, move over with the numpad, and then we can press V. Just V as in Victor. Jessica, the apprentice sorceress, sorceress. she gives pain at 77%. She slows us with 41%. She has a haste for herself and a blink for herself. She looks dangerous. Now, if she looks dangerous, that actually means she could kill us, but she probably won't. What we want to be very careful about is when the description says looks extremely dangerous. When it looks extremely dangerous, that means your chances of survival are probably around 50%, or it could be definitely less than 80%. So be a little bit careful about those extremely dangerous ones, especially if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Jessica, I'm actually surprised that she's that low. I mean, that only considered dangerous. I consider her very dangerous. So normally in combat, what you want to do is stair dance. So I want to go to this stair, and then um, you can pull enemies up. The only enemies that will join you going up the stairs, unlike in Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, they don't just like... Uh, well, I guess it is kind of like that. Enemies will join you in Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead after a few turns, if they were close by. Uh, in this game, they only go up if they are ex exactly adjacent to you. And even some enemies, like brain dead ones, zombies, I think, for example, they won't go up at all. But uh, enemies which are two away from the 
stair will not join you, will not go up with you. So you can kind of take some hits or pull some people very close and leave some of the people two tiles away in order to break everything up, you know, you know, of defeat in detail. But if they're saying that we can kill Jessica, I'm going to move right towards her and I blocked her attack. I'm just going to go ahead and start attacking her. Uh, what did she take out? She gestured wildly. She seems to speed up. Okay, so she hasted herself. Now, luckily for us, that is not a big deal because her attack is not very strong. What does she have? She is using a what? What are you using? She can. Uh, she's using her fist. <laughs> That's not that bad. Okay, so she blinked away. That is a... Uh, a little more scary because when she starts casting spells, that's when we could get into trouble here. I'm still going to pursue her. She did blink the wrong way. Oh, and we killed her. <laughs> now, that could have gone a lot worse. I think that that was pretty good for us. Um, could have been a lot worse. So we're going to go ahead and rest until we're full. We're now engorged. Oh, well. I mean, we're doing well. And back to auto-exploring. So we're looking for... Whips are maces and flails in that category. We're looking for um, good maces, good flails. Right now we're using just a plus zero flail. Base accuracy zero, base damage 10, base attack delay 1.4. Lower is better for attack delay, higher is better for the other ones, obviously. Yeah, want of random effects. Uh, <clears throat> not that useful, but we'll leave it for now. You start with the potion of might as a fighter, so most of the things you have to identify, but the Potion of Might will start, obviously, automatically identified for you. Continue to auto-explore. And what do we have here? A small, a snail-covered altar of chair. Oh, this is the slow-moving one, isn't it? So let's just kneel at this altar by going, pressing shift period, or greater than. We're pretending like we're going downstairs, but this is how you kneel at an altar. Yeah, that's right. So this one, this um, god is the is a very, very, very bad choice for people who are new. I would say this is a very advanced god. I, not necessarily a... Uh, okay, probably a hard god, but um, very powerful god. Only if used correctly. So they slow you down, which means you don't have a lot of escape options. You have to know how, you have to judge your fights really well, which means you should have really good knowledge. We are going to fight in an enclosed area here because I don't think it's a good idea to fight all those guys at once. We're dealing with, uh, let's get all the corpses. What, what do we have here? We have flail and plus your leather. So those aren't that good. Uh, this is a, oh my, Gozag. Now, Gozag is an interesting god. I'm not going to do Gozag because I think Quill 18. Quill 18, I basically consider myself a minor Quill 18. <laughs> I love, I, I'm, for the most part, I love all the games he plays. But he did a, a Gargoyle of Gozag, Gargoyle Fighter of Gozag. Now, this is, just happens to be my favorite combination, Gargoyle Fighter. Um, because I, I always look at fighters, they're really simple, easy, but the end game abilities that the Gargoyle has are they're well suited. Like I said, the Minotaur, the, um, the Troll, which is another one people commonly say a Troll Berserker is a good opener. But in my opinion, those aren't as good because they are not expected to survive as well in the late game. Whereas the Gargoyle has uh, this Torment Resist and stuff like that that makes it a little bit more resilient in the end game. Uh, more plate armor, we'll just avoid that. Okay, Sigmund. Sigmund is deadly. I'm pretty sure it's going to say is extremely de dangerous. It does. Sigmund is very deadly. Um, he can go invisible. The only advantage of this is that he uses a scythe, and his scythe is range of two, which means that normally you can stair dance with him very easily. The problem is sometimes he just kills you. Okay, we're confused. So this is possibly end game for us. Now, if I wanted to try to quaff a potion, which is this game's way of saying drink it. Um, I would be looking for a potion of curing, which would cure me of my confusion. However, I'm just going to pray that as a fighter we can tank. Oh, we feel less confused. That's good. Uh, I'm going to hope that we can get out of here before, and we definitely can, before Sigmund does anything. Okay, he hits us with a magic dart. Magic dart did three for us. Definitely could do a lot more. I don't think we want to fight Sigmund yet, so I'm just going to kind of tease him, and then I'm going to hit shift period. Oh, whoop, no, shift comma for less than 
to go up the stairs. First thing we're doing is rest to get our hit points back and now shift X. And I want to look for a different staircase down, so we'll go greater than. We'll just go over this one. We'll leave him behind. Oh, he's not that far away. And he is going to wander. But I would like to just get a little bit more... Can we even... might see us right away. Wait, is there anything left to explore up here? Yeah, there is. Okay. So let's go up here and just see what we can find. Now, Gozag as a god, the one huge disadvantage of choosing him. Uh, the one advantage is he gives you money for a lot of money for every uh, enemy that you kill. The bad news is they don't even drop corpses anymore. So, oops. Um, yeah, there's definitely some very particular disadvantages to Gozag. Could run into Sigmund at any time. I'm just going to... I guess we can just... So I don't know how to traverse. Let's just go up. Okay, there we go. Um, it's probably going to send us down that way, which I don't want to go. Oh! We can go back and kill Crazy Yoof. Crazy, even Crazy Yoof might be a little too much for us to handle. I usually have a go take time with him, but he's also... He's crazy, man. So we ended up right back. <laughs> the only place for us to go is towards Sigmon. He's probably wandered off from that exact location. Now the problem is, if we get ourselves stuck in a corner here, if he was to appear right here, we'd have no choice but to fight him. Or to start reading random potions until we got a teleport. Which is not, not a recipe for success. Um, okay. Oh, I have not explored... The, I've explored the entire map, except for this one little area, so auto-explore, which I was expecting to... Was, I was expecting for it to say, you've explored everything, done exploring, but... No, it wanted to launch us right towards Sigmund. I think I will still go this way in a roundabout method. And we'll probably just call this video to a close here, hanging on a, a cliffhanger on what we do with uh, dear old Sigmund. So now if I press O, there is somewhere else we have not explored yet. I don't know where that is. And I don't want us to route down so we missed like some little nook or cranny somewhere. I can't see where it is though. Oh, it's <laughs> it's this corner right here. We don't know that there is nothing there. Now if I, I'm gonna move up just to be safe, but now if I press O, yeah, partly explored, can't reach some places. The reason why it's saying can't reach some places is because we haven't looked in here. So this is a good place to call this first video to a close. We'll just keep these episodes nice and short and fun. This is a great game. I really love Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. As a reminder, it is free. I'll put a link in the description where you can get it. Um, so look in the video description below, or maybe I'll pin it. But we can just, honestly, you can just Google Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. But for now, thanks for watching, and until the next video, take care.